Hey there, my friend, Adam Earhart here. And in this video, I wanna share you clips from an interview that I did with a university freshman named Marcella, who had some amazing questions about digital marketing and marketing in general and the industry and what kind of work was involved and what were the skills or experience required in order to learn and to really make it in the industry. So if marketing, if digital marketing, if any of those things are of interest to you, I think you're going to find this highly informative. So. Let's dive right in. I'm currently a student at the University of Bridgeport. Um, I'm a freshman and my major is business, okay. but I will be transferring to UConn in September okay. to go into their marketing program. All right, so um, first I just wanted to ask exactly what you do, if YouTube is your full job or if you do marketing outside of just YouTube. Okay, yes, so I do marketing well outside of YouTube. YouTube is a very small part of the overall business and strategy. Uh, YouTube actually started as a marketing and lead gen tool for the business. Now, since back when it started, it's it's grown and evolved to where it's a, a significant, uh, a significant part of the business now. But yeah, it's still, still just a piece. Okay. And um, what qualifications does someone have to have to be in the position that you're in today? Yeah, so the sad reality is you need none. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it's an un, it's an unregulated industry, which means that anyone and everyone can call themselves a marketer or a business person or a coach or a consultant or whatever they want. You just literally have to go out and do it. Uh, that said, if you want to be ethical and authentic and actually get results, which is going to be required if you want to survive, then uh, really it comes down to kind of experience and self study. So one thing that is not required is a degree in marketing or anything like that. I have a degree in marketing, but I never use it. It's very, I don't want to say it's irrelevant to what I do now, but like the vast majority of what I do and what I've learned is, is self-study, a lot of books, a lot of coaches and mentors and, and YouTube videos and putting the pieces together and practice over the years. So essentially, yeah, you don't need any qualifications other than to be a little bit geeky and curious about how this all works. Mm -hmm. um, what does a typical work day look, for, look like for you? Yeah, so so I'm a little odd in that I have um, I wake up very early and and sort of dive in right away. So I I'm definitely by no means you don't need to do this to succeed or anything like that. But I typically wake up around four a.m. And then I'll go, yeah, it's a bit nuts. And then I'll go straight to the office and I'll work from about four till six or 6.30. Uh, and that's just because that's when my brain is the sharpest. So I get my best work done then. Then from around 6.30 to 7.30, get a workout in. Then um, head back into the house and feed the kids, get them up, get them all ready. Obviously school's a little weird right now with the whole lockdown yeah. thing, but like otherwise we prepping them. Uh, then it's back to the office from like up till about noon. During that time, it's uh, the, the early morning hours of like 4 to 6.30 is a lot of content. So it's like writing, creating, thinking through strategies, design, again, because that's sort of when my brain's dialed in. 9 to 12 would be, again, more content or possibly meetings with clients, like to work through whatever they have. Uh, then lunch like a normal person. And then after lunch, it's very much random. So like right now we're talking at 10 to two. So I've got these like little pockets of windows between meetings or other things that I need to be working on or whatever project it is. So the way that the typical day is never really a typical day because it varies based on not only day of the week, but also month of the year and different seasons and different programs and that. Okay. And um, I actually, this is one of my own questions. It isn't yeah. for my, but what exactly do you do? Do you, do you focus on digital marketing? Um, are you like, what exactly do you do? Yeah. So what do I do? So I do, that's a good question. It's, it's harder <laughs> to nail down than, uh, than I'd like to admit. I do marketing strategy. So what it means is that my focus is on growing businesses through clearly defining their target market, their value proposition, their message, their hooks, their angles, um, creating irresistible offers that we can craft and put out to the market, aligning those with the right media channel for the business, putting together a customer journey or, or marketing or sales funnel and how that all works together, um, creating content strategies and messaging and email strategy and ads and, and all of that. So 
that's it. Now, the the premise, or I guess the high level overview of all of that, is really just coming up with uh, like the the strategy to help promote and to talk about what the business does in a way that makes them not look pushy or salesy or aggressive, like in a way that really provides value so that even if someone doesn't do business with the business, they're still walking away feeling better about themselves and about the business. Mm -hmm. And then just two more questions. Um, yeah. What one piece of advice that you would give somebody looking to start this type of work? The best piece of advice I would give would be to follow your curiosity. So what ends up happening is like when we're looking at marketing, the big, bad, scary world of marketing, it's huge, right? Like there's there's digital and then of digital, there's content, SEO, video, da, da, da. And then if there's SEO, there's on page, off page, link, like it just, it never ends. So mm -hmm. what ends up happening is if you look at it, it's just this ridiculous minefield of stuff. And while you should have a basic understanding of all of the pieces, eventually you don't need to start there. So I would say like, what are you most curious about? Do you like, are you super geeky on design and like how user interfaces work? Or are you curious about psychology and why people do the things they do? Or is it just like the algorithms? Like why is Instagram hiding these stories and pushing those ones? And what's the message and how do I create community? And then really, once you find wherever you're curious, go to Amazon and spend a hundred dollars and buy 10 books on that subject and you will have more information and put yourself way ahead of everyone else who's not willing to do that. So really you don't need a lot of money to get started learning this stuff. You just need access to Amazon and YouTube and, uh, and some time to sort of put in the effort, but that's it. Follow your curiosity and, and let it kind of guide you and your natural skills are going to lead you in a direction. Okay. And last one, do you like your job? Do I like my job? I love my job. Yeah, I very much do, which sounds super weird and cliched to say because I didn't always like my jobs by any means. Um, and I've had some really good jobs in the past. Like I used to be a business jet pilot, captain. Um, we flew all over the world. We were paid very well. We stayed in amazing places. It was like a typical dream job and I didn't love it. It just wasn't it wasn't the right fit. I was always away. I didn't I didn't really have full control. Like the, it just never really lined up. Uh, then when I started marketing and I started an agency and consulting and I just, things started to click and I really liked it. Like I was looking forward to going back to work and I would work on it in spare time and I would study it. So again, it kind of comes back to that curiosity thing is that if you find, like if you're in an area of, of marketing or business or whatever, and you just don't like it, it might just be the wrong spot or the wrong part of it. You might just need to pivot or tweak the direction you're going. So yeah, I love it. Do you recommend um, me a minor in something like digital or analytics or some something that would help me like push into this? I don't know, because it's so complicated. And I love um, the idea of being a digital marketer, but it's just such a big topic that it's, it's huge. so <laughs> yeah, it's huge. So I think like in regards to say analytics or whatnot, again, again, it really comes down to where you're curious about, because for like, for example, when I first started digital marketing, I, I started, how did I start? It was like all web design. Then I learned SEO. Then I learned social media. Then I learned online ads. Then I learned, and I just started pick, putting the pieces together. And what I realized very quickly is that like, I don't love analytics. Um, I know enough so that I can make sure that my campaigns are profitable and they work. And I know what KPIs and metrics I need to measure, but I'm not like, I don't have Google analytics dashboards and everything set like, mm -hmm. so that's not me. Um, but if that's the way your brain works, then yes, I think probably the most valuable thing you can do is communication. Okay. Yeah. Like either maybe not even psychology, it's like legit communication. Um, what ends up happening is in marketing is like all of the grammar and rock structure and rules get thrown right out the window. It's very conversational. It still helps to know, how to format things and how the mind works and how to how to communicate a message and things like that. But yeah, from there, it really just comes down to what you like. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. it. It's funny you say that this is actually for a business communications class. So. Is it perfect. <laughs> yes. perfect. So like, it's funny, like looking back at my degree, um, oh, so many years ago, there was a few courses that I took that actually made like a really profound impact uh one of which was business ethics and that was more probably because of the professor i had was just like a really 
I, I don't know, it made me think a lot about stuff that was super interesting. The other was like an introduction to marketing course, because that's sort of what got me going about like product place, product price, place, promotion, presentation, mm -hmm. all the, all the stuff that goes into it. Um, and I was like, well, there's gotta be more to it than this. And then the other one was like a business writing communication, like this is how you format things. This is how you set it. This is how you do it. And then some design stuff as well. Actually, it was kind of useful. I'm not a designer, but knowing, all right, we need white space. The, we can't just have a chunk of text or we need this or we need that. And then it allows you to work with designers and so on. So, all right. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And of course, for more information on marketing and marketing strategy, the next thing you're going to want to do is check out the video I have linked up right right over there. So make sure to check that out now and I'll see you in the next episode.